and the cities where the tiles showed up. <coughs> also a South American connection. Railroad Joe was eliminated. So is that just a coincidence, or do you have an explanation of why? <laughs> um, yeah, it seems to be entirely coincidental. Uh, I but can't explain it. You know, the funny thing about that is, though, that people, this was a running joke with us, because people would say, maybe if you take all the tiles and you put them on a map and you connect all the dots, it'll make a picture or something, and we we're always like, no, that's movies, you watch too many movies, this is a documentary. But actually, uh, Steve was the first to point out that <laughs> if you put them on a map, it actually does, uh, it is meaningful in a way, um, although ultimately it was just a coincidence. Um, I want to say, before I forget, that um, we have uh, special pins for tonight that are all, um, they're all buttons with pictures of New York City tiles. And uh, we're inviting people to uh, Valdenuit Bar, I don't know how to say it, but... Uh, Valdenuit. Okay. Uh, if you want to, if you want to hang out in a more informal setting, uh, with some drinks, and that sort of thing. Um, we've, got, we've got little directions printed out. Now. What? One more quick point on the railroad, Joe. Question: uh, is the the tiles do appear in cities that are major points for the Conrail map, but I think one thing that became clear to us when we drove around to the cities to look at them is that actually it's more logical to think that the tiles were probably placed by a car driving on major highways because all of the tiles are right off of uh, kind of major exit points on the major highways that connect those cities. So um, I think that the, the railroad show thing was a, was a coincidence, although a tantalizing one. Yes. Um, <laughs> That was, this is something that comes up all the time, or the, you know, the two ends of, of the diff different ways to have dealt with the South Philly house. On the one hand, we could, have, we could have staked it out, we could have set up a live camera. On the other hand, we could have done a lot less in terms of hands-on uh, interaction that we did, and people criticize us from both ends, saying, oh, well, you really should have gotten him on video, or oh, you really should have left him alone and not made the movie, you know, so. This is kind of our compromise between the two. I think that I don't really think that staking out the house would have been necessary because I don't think it would have told us anything other than we would have seen him going out late at night, which we know that he does anyway. Um, and I think that that would have we tried to set a very conscious ethical line, and I think that would have been on the other side of it. And let me also just say that we, I mean, for us, it was more about finding out the information, which we did find. Okay, uh, and then we just I don't know. The more we found out about this person, uh, as they they started coming into focus. We just, I don't know, I mean, uh, we identified with them more, we were sympathetic, and we, we didn't want them to hate us, you know? Uh, we liked the guy, and we wanted to connect to him, at least we wanted to in the movie, and I think we've since discovered that that's not possible. Uh, so it would have seemed to kind of, it just would have been really grating, I think, uh, to, to have done something like that. Yeah, I, think, I, think there's a, um, I think there's a really big, like, in our, uh, in our, I, I don't know if it's just our culture, it might be just like a universal human thing, I don't know, but I think there's like a thing that people think, if they see someone's face, they understand that person, and I don't, I don't think it's true, so that's bottom line, I mean, yeah, I mean, if we had seen him come out, you know, people watching the movie could have seen his face, and I'm sure that like 30% or 41% or something of the movie viewing audience would have felt like they then understood this person a lot better, but I think that's kind of like, to, and to my mind, to my mind only, it seems kind of shallow. So I just, I would rather just say, okay, well, you know, yeah, like John said, you know. <laughs> but I, I wonder about that. I wonder if people, if they did see the face, if they wouldn't say, a filmmaker should never put that in there. They should oh, yeah, it sure. so much more mysterious. Because I feel like it's one of those things where you can't win. But, uh, yeah. You can and you can. reenactments you made? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, early on I knew that I wanted that, and I guess that was a bit of just kind of uh, creativity there. I just pictured it and thought, and I knew there was a certain look that I knew I wanted, so I looked at a lot of illustrators, and Steve eventually uh, pointed out this guy, uh, his name is Matt Rota, who he's a, Bro a Brooklyn artist who did the, uh, the work in the movie, um, and uh, you know, 
Steve, I think Steve and I were on the, were on the same wave, wavelength, which is, uh, which is great. So as soon as I saw it, I said, I, I want this artist. You know what I mean? No other artist will do it. And, and thankfully, he agreed to do it uh, and has been really cool about it. He's actually going to show up tomorrow, too. So we'll be doing Q&A. Now, I, I have a question for you. Uh, do you remember the seeing the tiles in the early 80s in South Philadelphia? Um, no, I was too caught up in my own idiot. <laughs> Yeah, could you tell us uh, about what the, physically what the tiles are? Are they a graphic? Are they ceramic? Are they, yeah, that's, what are they? that's one of the big things that I think that... Uh, we had a thread earlier in the movie where we talked more about what the tiles physically are, and we cut it out, and I'm not sure if it's clear uh, in the movie what they are, but what they are is a piece of linoleum, uh, soft linoleum as opposed to brittle, brittle linoleum that can absorb pressure. Uh, and they're carved um, and filled in with other pieces of uh, colorful material, presumably of the same kind. Um, and they're embedded into the ground by um, being kind of, so you get your piece of, of linoleum, right? You carve it with your toy message, and then you kind of make a sandwich out of it with two pieces of tar paper. Um, and then you, sp you smother the tile itself with uh, asphalt crack filler and Elmer's glue, and then you can drop it in the ground, um, and it will be concealed while it's setting in. Uh, by that top layer of tar paper, and it sets in by foot traffic and car traffic, and also the heat of the summer sun actually changes the uh, changes the consistency of the road, um, and so it just kind of sets in there permanently. So by the time that that top layer of tar paper has been stripped off, it's it's in there. You can't get it out with a knife. You couldn't get it out unless you had a jackhammer, or if you repaved the street, or if you dumped a bunch of tar on top of it. And on an interesting note, on that subject. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm like, I'm, I didn't really want to say this. Um, if you are interested, there are two tiles, fresh tiles, right in front of the theater here, um, that were put down by House of Hades group, who may or may not be in this theater. Two went down in front of the theater in Philadelphia, they're uncovered. Yeah. They're two covered in tar paper right in front of the theater tonight. It's the main cotton cap that's active right now. Yeah. They do a really good thing. They do oh yeah, that, we love it. <laughs> yeah, and we do, we do not know who they are. And they've been doing it consistently Although, for what, five, six years? Five, six years, yeah. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> yeah. Uh.